Here are today's top stories. A former mayor of San Jose Buan Town in Samar was seriously wounded while his bodyguard was killed in a pre-dawn attack on Monday. The Department of Justice says the fate of the amnesty of Magdala soldiers involved in rebellion lies with President Duterte. The National Bureau of Investigation joins a probe on the missing sacks of smuggled rice in Zamboanga. And the incorrupt heart of St. Padre Pio is in the Philippines for a three-week tour. Good day, I'm Pia Rosas Morato. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. A former mayor of San Jose de Buan Town in Samar was seriously wounded while his bodyguard was killed in a pre-dawn attack on Monday. Ananias Rebato, 57, is still recovering at the Eastern Visayas Regional Medical Center in this city after sustaining gunshot wounds when armed men attacked him during a fiesta celebration in San Jose de Buan Town past 1 a.m. Rebato's bodyguard, Severino Tesoro, 24, died in the incident and he was able to fire back at their attackers and killed one of the suspects. The other three gunmen managed to escape from the crime scene. Chief Superintendent Leonardo Carlos, Region 8, Eastern Visayas Director, said the police launched manhunt operations to arrest those behind the attack. Carlos has already sent directives to nearby police stations to look after the suspects and limit their movement and arrest them. Rebato's clan ruled the town for decades, served as mayor of San Jose de Buan Town from 2007 to 2016. He is reportedly planning to run in next year's elections. San Jose de Buan is a fourth-class town in Samar with a population of over 7,700 in 14 villages. Ending insurgency is a means of achieving social healing, according to National Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana. Lorenzana issued the statement during a high-level meeting with Task Force Balikloob lead and partner agencies last Friday. The task force, chaired by DND's Undersecretary Ronaldo B. Mapagu, has five lead agencies as its members. The Department of the Interior and Local Government, or DILG, the Department of National Defense, or DND, the National Housing Authority, or NHA, and the Office of the Presidential Advisor on Peace Process, OPAP, and the Office of the President. The defense chief said that ending the insurgency is actually not an end but rather a means towards achieving higher national objectives of social healing, reconciliation, unity among our people, and eventually attaining lasting peace, a legacy which the President Rodrigo Duterte wants to leave to the nation and to the people. In a related development, armed fighting between the military and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, or MILF, are over. This as Chief of Staff General Carlito Galvez Jr. visited Camp Darapanan, the MILF's main encampment in Sultan Kudarat, Maguindanao. Galvez said he is looking forward to a strong partnership with the MILF through the forthcoming 2019 plebiscite for the Bangsamoro Organic Law. The BOL is set to pave the way for the creation of the new MILF-led Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. Chief Justice Tavasita Leonardo de Castro on Monday formally bade farewell to her colleagues at the Supreme Court. In her farewell message, de Castro said she tried her best to make her presence felt not only by the employees but also of judges and justices nationwide. De Castro's 45-year career in government service will end on Wednesday as she reaches the mandatory retirement age of 70. She holds the distinction of being the first female top magistrate of the High Court following the ouster of Maria Lourdes Sereno. De Castro is also the Chief Justice with the shortest stint, having served for only two months. Malacanang expresses gratitude to the public for giving President Rodrigo Duterte a very good satisfaction rating despite the high inflation rate. The third quarter 2018 Social Weather Station survey conducted on the general performance of Duterte resulted in a net satisfaction rating of plus 50, which the SWS classified as very good. It was an eight-point decrease from plus 58 in June 2018. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said public satisfaction remains even as the government received the lowest rating in fighting inflation. 
He assured everyone that the administration is working double time to ensure prices of basic goods become stable. Roque said the government has taken measures including importation of rice to counter inflation. President Rodrigo Duterte may or may not pardon the fellow Magdala soldiers of Senator Antonio Trillanes. Just like in Trillanes' case, the amnesty papers of the soldiers who were facing rebellion charges were missing. Rom Dulfo has the story. It is up to President Duterte if he would grant executive clemency to some 200 other soldiers since the amnesty records are missing from the archives of the Department of National Defense. Justice Chief Minardo Guevara, however, says for now, the focus is on the amnesty grant of Senator Antonio Trillanes. The Makati RTC Branch 148 tackled last Friday the motion to issue an alias warrant of arrest and hold departure order against Trillanes. DND officials admit the agency has no records of the application for amnesty of the soldiers involved in three incidents of uprisings from 2003 to 2007. Two of these uprisings, the Oakwood Mutiny in July 2003 and the Manila Peninsula Siege in November 2007 were led by Trillanes, who was then a Navy Lieutenant Senior Grade. In 2011, the trial court dismissed the case against the Magdalo soldiers by virtue of the amnesty given by former President Noynoy Aquino in November 2010. But through President Duterte's Proclamation 572 issued on August 31, Trillanes' amnesty was declared void ab initio. Duterte said Trillanes failed to present the necessary requirements in the application of the amnesty for the Oakwood Mutiny, the Philippine Marine Standoff, and the Manila Peninsula Siege. Trillanes was arrested and booked for the rebellion case against him and other Magdalo soldiers over the Manila Peninsula Siege in 2007. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Rom Dulfo. The Philippine National Police and the Commission on Higher Education tackled in the dialogue the supposed recruitment activities of the New People's Army in schools. The dialogue between NCRPO Director Guillermo Eliazar and PNP PIO Benigno Durana with CHED Commissioner Prospero De Vera ended in a positive note. Eliazar said De Vera has vowed to organize a similar dialogue with the management of schools all over the country. Members of the academe earlier protested the tagging of 18 colleges and universities in Metro Manila as hotbeds of NPA recruitment. For its part, the AFP said they want parents to be aware of what's happening in schools so that students will not get involved with the MPA. Still to come, the National Bureau of Investigation joins a probe on the missing sacks of smuggled rice in Zamboanga. Homegrown products from Mindanao take center stage in a trade expo in Makati. These and more when the PNA Newsroom continues. isandaang bagong career executive service officers. Dalawang putitong civil servants ang hinirang na 2018 outstanding government workers at tatlo ang nakatanggap ng 2017 presidential gawat career executive service. Sa magkakaiwalay na pulong ay kinausap niya ang presidential advisor on OFW and Muslim concerns, mga opisyal na Manila Economic and Cultural Office at executive officials ng Rosso Boron Export, isang state-controlled company mula sa Russia na nag export ng military products at technologies and services. September 29, Sabado, Agusan del Sur. Binisita at pinuri ni Pangulong Duterte ang Armed Forces of the Philippines 401st at 402nd Infantry Brigade sa Camp Dato Lipos, Makapandong. I would like to commend the men and women of the Eastern Command for a wonderful performance. Through your valiant and relentless efforts, you have neutralized, apprehended, and facilitated the surrenderers of the regulars, militia ba ng bayan members, sangay ng partido local members, and more than 500 underground mass organizations members. 
Ininspeksyon din niya ang halos dalawang daang na recover at disinulong armas mula Enero hanggang Setyembre ngayong taon. October 2, Martes. Katarman, Northern Samar. Binisita ng Commander-in-Chief ang 803rd Infantry Brigade. You have indeed served the country well with your recent achievements. Saludo ako sa inyo. From January to September to this year, the 803rd Brigade conducted internal security operations resulting in the apprehension and surrender of impaged members. Also noteworthy is their prompt and efficient disaster response in times of calamities. Ako po si Secretary Martin Adanar at ito ang Duterte on Duty. Abangan sa susunod na linggo ang mga gagawin ng Pangulo. A House committee has endorsed for plenary approval a draft federal constitution filed by Speaker Gloria Macapagal Arroyo and other lawmakers. The committee report, dated October 2, contains the proposed provisions to the 1987 constitution. The resolution proposes a presidential federal form of government wherein the president and vice president shall serve a term of four years with one re-election. The first election under the proposed constitution shall be held on the second Monday of May 2022. The term of the president and vice president, which shall end in 2022, shall not be extended. The incumbent president is prohibited from running in the 2022 elections. The measure seeks to adopt a bicameral legislative department composed of the lower house and the senate, which shall have the power to create federal states. The Indian Embassy in Manila is interested in forging a partnership between Philippine and Indian news agencies to broaden the two nations' knowledge about each other. Indian Ambassador to the Philippines, Jadeep Muzamdar, on Sunday cited the information gap between New Delhi and Manila which can be bridged between agencies. He said, the agencies like the Asian News International and PTI Press Trust of India who can tie up with a Philippine news agency and exchange programs. ANI is a multimedia news agency in South Asia with over 100 bureaus in India and across the globe, while PTI is the largest news agency in India and commands 90% of news agency market share in the country. The ambassador said the embassy is keen to pursue talks on content sharing with the Philippine side within the year. The Department of Justice has ordered the National Bureau of Investigation to join the ongoing probe on the sacks of smuggled rice in Zamboanga City, which went missing last September 30. Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara directed the NBI to assist the Bureau of Customs and National Food Authority in the investigation. The BOC has already started looking into the facts and incidents that led to the disappearance of about 23,000 sacks of alleged smuggled rice. The sacks were intercepted by the Philippine Coast Guard, Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, and the Intelligence Service of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Two customs officials in Zamboanga City have been placed under administrative relief pending investigation of the missing sacks of smuggled rice. To date, 16,000 sacks have been recovered from various privately owned warehouses. South Korean Ambassador Han Dong-man has urged South Korean companies to invest in the Philippines in response to President Rodrigo Duterte's Build, Build, Build program. Han said Korea and the Philippines have enjoyed a very good relationship in many sectors since establishing diplomatic ties in 1949. Han expressed his gratitude to the government for supporting South Korea's journey to achieve peace and stability in the Korean Peninsula. He also noted the vibrant cultural relations between the two countries. The Korean envoy said he promised Duterte to bring up to 2 million the number of Korean tourists who will visit the Philippines. Next year, South Korea and the Philippines will be celebrating the 70th anniversary of establishing diplomatic relations. Entrepreneurs from Mindanao showcase their products in a four-day trade expo in Makati City. Homegrown products from numerous micro, small and medium enterprises from Mindanao are on display at Glorieta 3, Makati City for a four-day Mindanao Trade Expo which runs until October 9. Yvette Mariselli Punsalan, Board Director of the MTE Foundation Incorporated said, the 2018 Expo features more than 80 booths from Mindanao and some parts of Visayas. The fair showcases local products such as home decor and furnishings 
furniture, architectural fittings, visual arts, fashion accessories, textile, and local food products. Punsalan is positive that the MTE will make it international, saying the organization is on track in molding the exhibitors before they engage with foreign markets. A portion of the expo space dubbed Mindanao Pavilion is one of the 2018 MTE special features, acknowledging the world-famous and emerging cacao producers from Mindanao. The pavilion will also hold events such as seminars, food tasting, and product demonstrations and preparations. Volunteers from all walks of life, regardless of religion, are status gathered to clean up garbage from the coastline of General Santos City. The activity is part of efforts to instill concern and responsibility towards the environment in local communities. More on this from Benj Mondok. In observance of the International Coastal Cleanup Day last September 15, more than 300 Muslim and Christian volunteers joined forces in cleaning up the shoreline of four coastal villages in the city. Public school teachers, policemen, senior citizens, students, private companies, NGOs, barangay and parok officers, and General Santos City local government staff participated in the activity held at the shoreline of barangays Buayan, Baluan, Bula, and Dadiana South. Dennis Calio, Program Manager of Non-Governmental Organization Spectrum, said the organizers were elated by the positive response of the stakeholders. Calio said they encouraged the residents of the coastal villages to participate in the cleanup. Stakeholders also launched Project Reduce, a multi-sector project towards the conservation and protection of Salangani Bay. Among the key activities are coastal cleanups, community organizing, capacity building, competitions on proper waste segregation, and a convention that seeks to educate the public in reducing plastics pollution. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Ben Bondo. Up next, China donates to Davao City for the construction of school buildings, the incorrupt heart of St. Padre Pios in the Philippines for a three-week tour. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. The World Bank expects the Philippine economy to speed up in the second half of 2018 and in early 2019 and will continue to be among the fastest growing economies in Southeast Asia this year despite inflationary pressures and rising global uncertainty. The Philippines' manufacturing sector surpassed the performance of its Southeast Asian neighbors in September as shown by the latest Purchasing Managers Index survey. The largest Korean arms maker has partnered with the Philippines' top rifle manufacturer, United Defense Manufacturing Corporation, as part of the strengthened South Korea-Philippines defense cooperation. The Congressional Bicameral Conference Committee approved a bill seeking to increase the paid maternity leave period to 105 days for female workers in the government and private sector. President Rodrigo Duterte's net satisfaction rating was recovered to very good in the third quarter from its record good in the second quarter. President Rodrigo Duterte has accepted PCOO Assistant Secretary Mocha Uson's resignation and expressed gratitude for her service. Electricity in 93.43% of households affected by Typhoon Ompong in mid-September have been restored. In a bid to provide fast and efficient passport services, the release of passports will be shortened to as early as six working days starting this month. Under the new program, trainees will be provided with not just scholarships for technical vocational courses, but also with assessment and toolkits, allowance, and training insurance.
Presidential Communications Operations Office Secretary Martin Andenar said he is not running for senator. This amid reports that at least six members of the Duterte cabinet will be seeking a local or national post in the 2019 midterm elections. Andenar said he was contented that under his leadership, the PCOO and its attached agencies have vastly improved. Andenar said the Philippine Broadcasting Service AM and FM radio stations garnered a larger audience share, while PTV4 is now number four in the ratings game. The PCOO also increased its social media presence with its official Facebook page, garnering almost 1.5 million followers. Meanwhile, the Philippine news agency forged several memoranda of agreement, the most recent to bolster the Philippines-Hungary ties. Andernar also said a Mindanao Media Hub facility is expected to be established to house the government media. Moreover, the PCOO is educating citizens in countering the spread of fake news through its dismissing disinformation campaign. The government of the People's Republic of China through its embassy in the Philippines, has donated 150 million pesos for the construction of 13 school buildings in Davao City. Mayor Sara Duterte spearheaded the ceremonial groundbreaking in Agdao Elementary School on Friday, coinciding with the World Teachers' Day celebration. Mayor Sara thanked the Chinese government represented by Chinese ambassador to the Philippines, Zhao Xinhua, as she highlighted the need to invest in the youth through education. Zhao said the People's Republic of China is very happy to extend a little donation after seeing how the city values education. Aside from Agdao Elementary School, other buildings will be built for 12 more schools. The Philippine Army has extended its congratulations to the Philippine Army Dragon Boat Team for their latest victory in South Korea. The Dragon Warriors won three gold medals in the Ada Waterways International Dragon Boat Festival in Ichion last Saturday. The Army team won in the 200-meter mixed, 500-meter mixed, and 2,000-meter mixed categories. The Army Dragon Warriors were first hailed as world champions in an International Dragon Boat Federation World Dragon Boat Championships in Italy in 2013 and in Australia in 2016. The relic of St. Padre Pio is currently on tour around the country. Devotees who venerate this saint may visit the relic's designated shrines throughout its three-week visit. But of course, Zapata has a story. The relic of the incorrupt heart of St. Padre Pio of Pietralcina, known for healing the sick, is now in the country. In the next three weeks, Filipino devotees will have the chance to venerate the relic as it will be transported from Luzon to Visayas and Mindanao. St. Padre Pio's heart relic arrived in Manila on October 5. It was fetched from Italy by retired Lipa Archbishop Ramon Arguelas, Father Joselin Jojo Gonda, Rector of the National Shrine of St. Padre Pio in Santo Tomas, Batangas, and San Franciscan priests. From the airport last Friday, a motorcade brought St. Padre Pio's heart relic to Lipa, Batangas. Papal Nuncio to the Philippines, Archbishop Giordano Casha led the 9 a.m. Mass at the shrine last Saturday. From there, the relic was brought to Santissimo Rosario Parish at the University of Santo Tomas in Manila. From October 9 to 11, it will be at the Manila Cathedral, which will open for 24 hours for the devotees' veneration. From October 11 to 13, it will be transferred to the Archdiocese of Cebu in the Visayas. The last leg will be on October 14 to 16 in the Archdiocese of Davao in Mindanao. In the morning of October 17, the relic will go back to Batangas and will remain there until October 26. The Philippines will be the fourth country to be visited by the heart relic aside from the United States, Paraguay, and Argentina. The incorrupt heart of St. Padre Pio seldom gets out of its home at San Giovanni Rotondo, the Capuchin Monastery, where the stigmatist spent his entire life. St. Pio died in 1968 at San Giovanni Rotondo in Foggia, Italy, where he spent his entire life as a Capuchin friar. The shrine of St. Padre Pio in Batangas was declared a national shrine by the CBCP in 2015. The shrine has been attracting thousands of pilgrims ever since, especially during Holy Week and every 23rd of each month declared a special day for Padre Pio 
when masses and healing liturgy are held. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Maricor Zapata. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Here's another look at today's top stories. A former mayor of San Jose de Buan town in Samar was seriously wounded while his bodyguard was killed in a pre-dawn attack on Monday. The Department of Justice says the fate of the amnesty of Magdala soldiers involved in the rebellion lies with President Duterte. The National Bureau of Investigation joins a probe on the missing sacks of smuggled rice in Zamboanga. And the incorrupt heart of St. Padre Pio is in the Philippines for a three-week tour. Thank you for watching another edition of the Pine Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the Pine website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. And that's your daily dose of the latest news and information that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. I'm Pia Rosas Maroto. Good day.